Hey everybody! Today I'm going to be making a case for the Mini Tethered Sumo Robot project using Fusion 360. This is a fairly low-tech case that prints in about two hours or so. Uh, it will get the job done. If you feel like modifying any part of this design, you're more than welcome to, of course. It's, uh, it's only really got a few steps. Some of these parts might look a little complicated. This might be a long video. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to start off by making a new design so that this looks the same for all of you. And I'm going to try to replicate what I did in the other one. I'm going to start off by making a sketch. This sketch is going to be on the top plane. If you don't know how to navigate in Fusion 360, you can click and drag around the nav cube up here. If you get totally lost, hit the home button. I need to start this sketch on the top plane, this one right here. Okay. Uh, the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangle. It's not actually going to be a two-point rectangle. It's going to be a center rectangle. Starting on the origin point here. I always start my parts on the origin point so that I can mirror things later on. I'm going to type in the dimensions for this. I want my starting rectangle to be 70 millimeters by 70 millimeters. You can get the other number by uh, hitting tab and then press enter to set those dimensions. So we just got a starting square. I'm going to finish this sketch right now. Next up, I'm going to extrude this. I'm just going to pull it up two millimeters. And this is going to be the starting point here. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to make some support pieces on the underside. And really the most important part is to get the holes in the right location because we're trying to match this up to a gearbox that has some set hole locations. So I'm going to rotate around. You can either do that by grabbing the cube here. You can also hold shift and press the middle button and rotate around like this. I'm going to be making a sketch on this bottom surface here. I'm only going to sketch this on one side, and then I will mirror it later on. I'm going to start with a two-point rectangle, and this two-point rectangle should start in the corner here. It's going the full length of our initial rectangle. I want it to be three millimeters wide, and it doesn't snap to the grid point, so I'm going to hit tab and type in three, so it's exactly three millimeters. Okay. Next up, I need to lay out where the hole is going to go. It's going to be somewhere around here. So I'm just going to make two layout lines starting from the same point. The first one's going to come over 20 millimeters. The next one's going to come down 5 millimeters. From that point right there, ch check to uh, make that. From that point, I'm going to make a center diameter circle. The first one is going to be 2 millimeters. So type in 2 and hit enter. I'm going to make a second circle as well. This one's going to be starting from the same point. And this one is going to be 10 millimeters. So it goes all the way out to that outside edge there. Okay. I want to extrude several of these pieces all at once. And you see as I highlight it, we've made several bits of geometry here. So I'm going to simplify this with the trim tool. I want to take out these two circle bits. Uh, I also want to take out these two sections of the line. You could take this line out as well, but we made geometry off of that, so I would just leave that in there for now. We need this piece to be continuous, which it is, so I'm going to finish the sketch. Now I'm going to extrude this piece here, and I'm going to pull it down exactly 8 millimeters. So you can type in 8, or you can just grab the arrow and drag it down. They both do the same thing. Okay, so now we've got this piece with a side and a little mounting hole for our screw here. Uh, I kind of got lost in space, uh, but you just need to rotate around to get back in the same place. The next thing I need to do is I want to make that same thing again, but I don't want to go through all the work of it just in case I screw up a measurement and I need to change things later on. I want to mirror this, but what I need to mirror is not the entire body. I need to mirror that feature that we just created. That feature would be this extrusion where everything popped out. So I'm just going to click on that extrusion. You now need to select the mirror plane. So this would be the imaginary surface that we're going to mirror this thing on. Okay, and then press OK. And now we've got two sides. Beautiful. Uh, I'm going to go back, hit the home button so that we're all looking at the same screen here so that we get our front and back uh, oriented right. The next thing I'm going to do is make the wedge that comes down on the front. So to make this, what I'm going to make is a construction plane. I'm selecting a plane at an angle. And I want this to start on this top edge right here. 
So select that edge and grab the little circle and pull this around until it says 45 degrees. Okay. What a construction plane is, is it's a place where we can make a sketch that's not one of the original planes or one of the flat surfaces we already have. We can now sketch on this surface. I'm going to create a sketch here. I'm going to make a two-point rectangle, and this one's going to start at this corner here. Make sure that it actually snaps to the corner. And it's going to be 70 millimeters wide by 40 millimeters long. So it should look something like this. Okay, let's finish that sketch. I am going to now extrude this piece. I don't want it to come up. I actually want it to come down. So grab the arrow and pull it down. And instead of minus 15 millimeters, I want this to be a three millimeter thick piece. Now, if you do this, because we're cutting into one of the other bits of our part here, uh, it assumes that you want to cut this away from the other one. We don't. We want to join it. Okay. So now we have the start of our wedge here. It looks a little awkward with this corner, so I'm going to clean those up right now. I'm going to do that with a fillet. And you're probably going to have to zoom in for this because you need to hit this edge right here. And we may as well do the second one too. I'm panning by just selecting the middle button. Just click and grab and drag around so that we can grab that second edge as well. And let's try uh, something like a 10 millimeter fillet. That looks pretty good. What about 12? That doesn't really matter. Looks good. Okay. Uh, this wedge is not very wedgy either, so while we're doing these little modifications, I'm going to do another one called a chamfer. And I'm going to chamfer this bottom corner, or this bottom edge, I should say, right here. And I want it to go up about three millimeters. Yep, that looks right. So that it makes this nice little sharp wedge. Okay. So we got the base shape going on here. This, I mean, as it is, this would probably work. Uh, a couple other things that we need to add, though. Uh, this sumo robot is going to have a cable attached to it. And if we just yank on the cable all the time, it's probably going to jostle some electronic collect connection loose. So I'm going to make a couple of strain relief holes. I'm going to start the first one up on the top, on this top surface right here. I'm going to make a line along the red axis, the Y axis. It's going to start right here at the edge. This line's going to be 8 millimeters long. And then I'm going to make a circle from that point there, 8 millimeters wide. I should say 8 millimeters in diameter. Let me just make sure that's 8 millimeters in diameter. Yes, it is. I'm doing this by setting a dimension to it. There we go. Finish that sketch. Grab the extrusion tool. Select that circle, pop it down. Doesn't matter how far you go, but what's smart, instead of going a certain distance, is to go to this bottom surface here. So it always cuts through to that bottom surface, no matter how far that surface is away. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to make a second one. This one's going to be on the underside. This will take a few more steps. So I'm going to make another sketch. It's going to be on this bottom surface here. I'm going to start with a rectangle. Uh, not a two-point. This one will be a center rectangle. And it's starting right on the origin, right here. It is going to be exactly four millimeters wide by 16 millimeters tall. Do those dimensions matter? Not really. This is just a hole. Let's finish that sketch. Pop this piece up. This one's going to pop up seven millimeters Okay, make sure it joins to the other piece. Beautiful. Now I need to make a hole in this little bit here. This also helps uh, just keep everything sort of flat on the, uh, on the gearbox. Let's make another sketch on this surface. And this time I'm making a circle, but this one will be a two-point circle because I know what one point is going to be. It's going to be at that origin point right there. And we're going to pop that up six millimeters. Okay, and now finish that sketch, pop that piece out. I'm going to go to this object here and make sure it cuts. Looks good. So our 
cable is going to come through this hole, through that hole, and then connect to our motors over here. This looks like a block. It looks kind of ugly. So I'm just going to do a couple little modifications for strength. And to make it look a little bit better, let's do a fillet on these two corners. And pull them out until they look good. Something like that. Maybe a little less. Sure. And maybe another fillet just to make things look a little nicer on these two top edges here. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay. Now I'm going to do one more little modification to this. This wedge is nice, but a 3D printed wedge is not the strongest or the flattest. So I'm actually going to plan to add a little piece of metal here, like a razor blade basically, so that this is really scraping the ground so it hopefully gets up and underneath your opponent. Uh, let's make a sketch on this angled surface here. So let's just rotate to make sure you're on the right surface on that angled surface there. I'm going to make a two-point rectangle. It's going to start in the corner. This is going to go up, make sure it touches the other edge. 70 millimeters by 15 millimeters tall. Finish that sketch. Extrude this piece. Make sure that you're cutting into the part this time. We're going to only go down one millimeter, just enough space to fit a little piece of sheet metal. Wonderful. Okay, it looks a little awkward now, but it will work once we get the metal in there. And we should probably put a couple of holes to mount that piece of metal on as well. So I'm going to create a sketch here on this surface. And I'm just going to measure this out from the middle just to make sure that things end up lined up in the right place. So I'm going to use these. Uh, let's measure up from the bottom. Let's say 7.5 millimeters up, so it's halfway up. And I'm going to make another line that goes across. This one will be 20 millimeters over. I'm going to put one little circle in here. This will be exactly 2 millimeters, the same as the other hole. Okay. And uh, we could mirror this just for simplicity's sake. Let's just draw another little line and another little circle. Okay. And pop those two circles out. Let's go to this bottom object. Make sure it cuts. And we've got two little mounting holes now. So that is it. Feel free to modify this. Uh, this sumo robot only has a wedge on the front. So if you feel the need to put some protective sides on the side, absolutely. You might want to drag these sides down a little bit further. Your back is completely exposed, so if you need to protect your back, you might need to make something there. The size limit for this project is 13 centimeters by 13 centimeters. So let's measure this, say, from this point to, uh, it won't quite be accurate, but yeah, looks like about 10 centimeters or so. So this is well within the size limit. You have a couple extra centimeters to play with if you like. But that's it. That is the, the simplest that I could make a sumo case, which is going to be practical and effective. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you on the next one.